Hi everyone, my name is Trevor. I'm the author of Le Morner Engine, a light 3D game engine featuring a software renderer, which you just saw running. Today I'd like to show you the code that runs the front end of the renderer. Here we are in Visual Studio, and this is the function that is called to start rendering a draw call. It contains the number of triangles in the mesh, uh, an index stream, and a vertex stream. The renderer has what's called a sort middle architecture, where triangles coming off the front end geometry stage are written down into buffers associated with screen space bins. Once all seen triangles are binned, the back end proceeds with attribute fetch, attribute shading, and pixel shading. So attribute fetch is deferred to the back end, and we only concern ourselves with vertex positions here. The vertices are transformed by the clip space matrix, which is a composite of a number of child matrices, uh, any rotation matrix used to orient the model in 3D space, the camera matrix, which maps the model into camera space, and a projection matrix, which will map the three element position vector into a four element homogeneous coordinate uh, in clip space. The front end can be considered as having two distinct stages. The first is concerned with operations on vertices, vertex fetch and transform, and the second is operations dealing with triangles, uh, which are assembled explicitly from the vertices and undergo clipping, projection, screen space mapping, and binning. Uh, so looking at our code, you can see here we loop over the input triangles, and we do so in batches of 16. We process triangles a small batch at a time to keep our local data in the cache. So the first thing we need to do is transform the vertices of our input triangles into clip space. But we note that our triangles are part of a mesh and hence share vertices. So we want to avoid shading the same vertex multiple times. One approach is to use a post-transform cache, but I take a different approach here. Uh, each pass through this loop initialize a vertex batch data structure. Uh, this contains a list of uh, unique vertices and a local index into them. So for each input triangle we read in a vertex, check it against the vertices that we already have stored, uh, add that vertex, vertex if it's new and write in the index. So this process finishes with a list of unique vertices for the current batch of 16 triangles. So now we can transform the vertices. Uh, this is a vector matrix multiply implemented in SIMD. Uh, just go to that. Uh, and, uh, so you can see these functions are inline uh, wrappers for our uh, SIMD intrinsics. Uh, so now our tri triangle vertices are in clip space which is a unit coordinate space conducive to clipping our vertices against the view volume. So the next stage is to characterize our vertices as to where they lie with respect to two volumes. Firstly, the view volume, and secondly, the guard band volume, which is a volumetric representation of the precision limits of the rasterizer. The rasterizer uses fixed point integer values to determine pixel coverage and there is an upper bound on such numbers beyond which they will overflow. So triangles which intersect the view and guard band volume must be clipped. Triangles that lie wholly inside the view volume and those that intersect the view volume but lie wholly within the guard band volume can be accepted without clipping. Triangles that lie outside the view volume are rejected. Uh, we process four vertices at a time using SIMD, fetching out four vertices uh, into this uh, uh, array of structures and transposing it uh, into a structure of array. So the vector rows contain the X, uh, Y, Z and W components for each vertex respectively. If we look at this transpose function, uh, we see it is basically a 4x4 matrix transpose implemented with a series of vector lane interleaves. Uh, so we make a series of simple comparisons uh, amongst the vertex components and emit a bit mask with bit set for inclusion in each of the clip space planes. These operators are overloaded vector operators. 
Uh, this uh, <coughs> first section compares the four vertices against the view volume and the second, the guard band volume. And moving down, this next block of code creates a composite bit mask for each triangle by combining its constituent vertex bit masks. Uh, this mask describes how the triangle lies with respect to those two view volumes, uh, the two volumes, uh, and is used to drive the next code section, which is triangle assembly, uh, where we form the triangles explicitly by copying out the vertices from our vertex batch. From here on, the pipeline will treat triangles as distinct entities uh, not having shared vertices. Uh, triangles requiring clipping are written to this uh, clip batch uh, structure. Uh, triangles not requiring clipping are written into the triangle batch structure, and those lying outside the view volume are discarded. Barycentric coordinates uh, are assigned to the vertices at this point and will accompany the triangle data through the rest of the pipeline. The barycentric coordinates are used in the back end of the renderer for shading uh, and must be clipped and projected. So now clipping proceeds. The clipping load per frame is low. The guard band volume is several times larger than the view volume and only large edge on triangles tend to intersect both. Here we have the clipping function. Uh, it proceeds a triangle at a time and clips an input triangle against the planes of the view volume one plane at a time and only those planes that are bit marked as being intersected. Uh, we end up with a clipped polygon which needs to uh, be uh, decomposed into one or more triangles, uh, taking care to discard degenerate polygons with less than three vertices. Alright, so our clip triangles are output into the triangle batch buffer. Uh, this first phase of the front end will loop uh, until 16 valid triangles have accumulated in the buffer before the second phase is run, uh, unless there are no more triangles to fetch, in which case uh, what remains in the buffer is flushed down the pipeline. And this triangle batch buffer is implemented as a virtualized circular buffer. So then let's look at the second phase of the front end, which is called uh, with this function here, process triangle batch. So this code block performs two functions, perspective projection, which maps our triangle vertices from a four dimensional clip space into two dimensional normalized device coordinate space and screen space mapping, which maps the vertices to screen space. Uh, so they lie in the range of the uh, size of our screen. In this, excuse me, in this case, 0 to 1024 in the x-axis, 0 to 768 in the y-axis. So once again, this is done using SIMD to process four triangles at a time. We fetch up the position and the barycentric uh, attributes, transpose them into our structure of array form, perform our vector computations uh, using the overloaded operators so it all flows and reads like scalar code uh, except we're pressing four processing four elements at a time. Uh, we transpose again to restore our data to uh, array of structure form and write the results down with these stores. Uh, you note that I'm taking the reciprocal of the de depth value and multiplying through this is quicker than a division. Uh, and note that we are projecting the barycentrics as well. So the next block of code determines whether the triangles are front or back facing. Uh, we will discard back facing triangles by simply not binning them. I use the sign of the triangle area in screen space to determine orientation and I perform the computation in fixed point format with eight bits of sub pixel precision. The same used in the rasterizer. Converting the triangle, triangle vertices to fixed point has the effect of snapping them to a sub-pixel grid, which helps manage any degeneracy caused by floating point imprecision with small or thin-edged triangles. The triangle area is found with a 2D cross product, which involves multiplying two fixed point numbers together. To avoid integer overflow, the computation is performed with 64-bit integers which precludes the use of SIMD. So this code section is scalar, processing a triangle at a time. And we use a bit mask to capture the result. 
and the final step is to bin the triangles. The screen space is divided into a grid of 128 by 128 pixel bins, each with an associated buffer. To determine bin coverage, we find the triangle's bounding box. Uh, we map it into bin space. Once again, we use uh, SIMD to process four triangles at a time, um, map the vertices into fixed point format. We find the bounds of the vertices with our, our vector max and min, snap to pixel centers, <clears throat> uh, and uh, then check for pixel coverage. Uh, we bitmark if the triangle is collinear or doesn't cover any pixels, in which case it will not be binned. Uh, we map the bounding box into bin space, clamp to prevent overflow, and then uh, in this section we uh, walk the bounding box and write down the triangle data, the position of the barycentric um, attributes into our bins. So calls to the rendering front end can be processed in parallel since each thread has its own bin data structure. Processing each draw call is expressed as a job, which is submitted to the thread pool. So that concludes the overview of the front end of the renderer. I hope it was informative. Uh, be sure to check out my website for further videos and articles, download the demo, and follow me on Twitter. Thanks for listening.